on everybody. I just got done bleeding the uh, shock remote lock on the shock on my Trek Superfly that has a dual remote lockout. Um, and it occurs to me the uh, procedure to bleed the uh, lockout, whether it be the front fork uh, or the rear shock, is the same. So I'm getting ready to do the same thing on my uh, single speed here, which obviously only has a front lockout. Uh, but I figured I would make um, a video, so if anybody wants to see how it's done in real time, uh, you can see that. So uh, a few basics first. Uh, the lockout needs to be in the extended position before you start. That reduces um, the pressure in the system as low as possible. Uh, and I will go over that shortly. So this is the lockout here. Uh, you can see the bleed screw at the top. First, we're going to loosen this. Uh, assembly. I don't have the matchmaker, so I have you know uh, Shimano XDR brakes and uh, a SID fork. Um, so I'm going to loosen this so that we can move this point, the bleed port, to be the highest point on on the system. So let's go ahead and do that. Just using a Torx. This is usually included in the bleed kits. I believe that's a 25. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it in that position uh, so that it doesn't move around. Okay, so uh, that is tight. Now let me make this base a little more stable. There we go. So just to give you another view, the, the thing we tighten and loosen is you can see that the bolt is under here so here is the bolt you just loosen that bolt and uh, spin the clamp around uh, one is up here as we just covered that's this and the other one will be down here and I believe they're the same size so uh, before we can start we need to get our syringes ready along with the fluid we're using reverb fluid and we've got the syringes here so I'm literally going to uh, open the fluid bottle and pull some fluid in If you turn it upside down and keep pulling, you'll probably be able to remove more air out. And uh, I'm just slowly pushing this in. You can see the bubbles coming up. And the fluid level starts to rise. So I'm going to get rid of some excess fluid this way. Okay, that should be plenty, I'm thinking. All right, so. Let's go back to the bike. Now make sure the remote is in the locked out position, which means it's extended as far as it can go. And I will go ahead and uh, open the bleeders. We'll start with the bottom one. This is just a T15, uh, I believe. Go ahead and pull that one off. and attach our first uh, syringe. There's that one. Uh, 
and here's the top one. Go ahead and take that out. And plug this in. All right, now we're both uh, plugged in. So you can start trying to flu push fluid through. You see how dirty the fluid coming up is. It looks pretty disgusting. And now we have fresh fluid coming out, which is good. And then I can push the fluid through this way. And you can see the other syringe rising. Go ahead and angle this up differently so you can see a little better. As I push the top syringe, you can see the rear syringe is moving up. I'm going to do the same thing again from the bottom this time. Man, the pressure is pretty high, but it does work, as you can see. Okay, let's do that again. All right, now I'm going to actuate the lockout. So I don't know if you could see that in the video, but it pushed the, uh, the syringe up ever so slightly. So with the lockout actuated, I'm going to move some more fluid through. And now, while I push down here, I'm going to open the lockout as and lock it out one more time. And some people say it's good to uh, try pulling on this to really work the air bubbles out. But so far, this looks pretty good. Now, just because it looks like the fluid in there was either really old or the wrong fluid, I'd like to pull in some fresh fluid into this. So while the remote's locked out, I'm going to unscrew this and pull some fresh fluid into the syringe. All right, now I have fresh pink fluid, so I'm going to go ahead and screw this in. and work in this fresh fluid uh, through the system. So I'll go ahead and engage the lockout. Start pushing. I'm going to um, lock it out again. Keep pushing, keep pushing. And towards the end here, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew this bleeder and then put the bleed screw in. And that should complete the process. Snug that up, and uh, get the other bleed screw ready. Go ahead and put the screw in place. Snug that. Let's see how the, uh, the lockout feels. It feels very, very good actually, better than before. Very solid actuation. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove the bike, put the bike back down, and double check the operation. But first, we wanna wipe any excess uh, fluid. I believe this is just uh, oil. So it shouldn't be too bad for components, but it's always good to uh, clean everything up. Let's see here. It's 
still need to uh, position this properly and tighten it down. Let's see, so it's currently locked out. A little bit of movement. There we go. So you can see the difference. When it's locked out, it's not 100% locked out, but it's pretty close. Now I didn't move uh, the floodgate, uh, that's this adjustment. I never really play with that kind of thing, so I, I, think it's, I think it's probably okay. So the last thing left to do is to tighten the bolt under here, as I showed you before, after we have it to the um, correct angle that we want, which will be the opposite process of what we just went through again. But the bleed process is uh, more or less complete, so let me show you. Um, what I'm doing over here with the old fluid. Uh, so I'm just emptying that into the jar. This is all I got from my dual lockout, uh, but it looked like the, which is on this bike by the way, on the Trek Super Black, one of my favorite bikes. The geometry is amazing on it. Anyway, um, so you can see the color of the fluid here looks very different than what was in there before. And uh, in a clear container, it doesn't look quite as dark, uh, but it's starting to take the hue of uh, a, a brown fluid, like brake fluid or engine oil. I'm probably gonna hang on to this until I've filled it with enough uh, suspension oil before I recycle it. But again, here's what the new fluid looks like, a little bit lighter color, even though it's in an opaque container. So the next step to do is to um, wash these in soap and water and let them uh, stay open to dry. So I will do that. But uh, let's finish up the bike first. So again, you just tighten this T25. Well, loosen it get it to the position you want. I like it right up against the handlebar, right up against the brake lever, and then tighten it back. And that concludes this repair. Hopefully that was uh, helpful to you guys, and happy biking.